Yo, what is going on YouTube? I am Germ here, and in today's video, I just think we need to talk about Rogue. It's about that time, you know. At certain points, there was questions about, uh, you know, Rogue's off to a hot start. Hey, they're three and zero. They're looking pretty good, but, uh, you know, are they legit? Are they for real? And then the next week, you know, hey, they're five and zero. But uh, let's see how they get through this next week. They got a couple big games coming up. They got a couple big opponents. Um, you know, let's not crown uh, Rogue too quick. You know, hey, they're still Vitality. They're still Fnatic G2. There's some other really, really great teams. But now, all of a sudden, we are almost through the first round robin. We're not all the way there yet. We still have two more games uh, in the LEC for this entire first round robin. But Rogue is sitting at 7-0. and And they're coming off a very, very big week in the LEC. Um, so I think it's time to start talking. Uh, how legit is this Rogue team? Are they the best team in the LEC? By, you know, automatically, does that make them the best team in the West? How legit are they? How strong is this team? How good is this team? Because coming into the season... Not a lot of ton of not a ton of people were talking about him. So uh, definitely drop a like if you guys do enjoy this video. I'd appreciate that a ton. Subscribe, stay up to date on all my latest content. Consider checking out the merch first link in the description below. With that being said, let's get right into this. Uh, Rogue is coming off a very very impressive week. Uh, again, obviously there was there was questions about their legitimacy. There was claims about you know just how good they are or whatever. Um, but in this last week, they took down. Uh, five and zero fanatic, who a lot of people said was probably the best team in the LEC, at least you know, especially coming into this weekend, uh, and maybe the best team in the West. Some people think they're better than Team Liquid, EG, Hundred Thieves. You know, some of these uh, top LCS teams. You know, depending on who you thought the top LCS team was, uh, and then. They played Vitality on Saturday, which this is not the Vitality from week one. This is not the 0-3 Vitality. This is not Perks inting on Akshan. This is Perks playing well and Vitality playing well. This was a very, very great weekend from Rogue, and that's tough. To have a weekend of Fnatic and Vitality back-to-back -back where you were preparing for both of those teams. You know, usually you have one really, really big game per week. You know, usually you have scrims and practice and strategy and meetings, all that stuff mainly focusing on one team. Yes, you do still have another team, you have another opponent, but usually there's one opponent that you can put a little less time towards, have a little less focus for. You know, you have the one match you can really gear up for. But the fact that Rogue, uh, I mean, they're going to have to gear up for all their matches now to keep this undefeated streak going or whatever, but uh, the fact that they had to, to gear up for two really, really big matches, that's tough. That's mentally draining, that's taxing, that's hard to do. Uh, and not only did they do it, they did it very, very well. Obviously, in this game uh, against Fnatic, you know, they, they looked good. Um, this was Larson going 5-0 and on Twisted Fate. This is Comp going 6-0 and on Jin. I mean, just not a lot of mistakes from Rogue. Not a lot of ways for them to be punished. Malrong 8-1-6 and six on Viego, uh, showing another champion that he can play very, very well. Trimby, Oduamna, everyone popping off. Um, just a very, very good win. Again, this was the, the, the game of, of the two undefeated teams, and they... Killed Humanoid seven times, and they, they just looked very, very great in this game. Uh, and then again, this Vitality that's on a little bit of a resurgence, Rogue was able to handle them very, very well. 2-1-6 and six on the Volley Bear from Malrong. 7-0 and oh on the Caitlyn from Comp. Um, not exactly the best or craziest scoreline from Larson here on the Victor 2-3-3, three, and three, but again, this was a very, very good win from Rogue against the super team of the LEC, a team that people have picked, uh, you know, potentially to win titles in the LEC this year, potentially go to like the semifinals at Worlds. Fnatic and Vitality both and Rogue handled them. So we went from talking about, you know, whether or not Fnatic was going to go to 18 and 0 to now can Rogue go 18 and 0? Are they this team? Because again, yes, they do still have two games left, but it's not like they've only beaten a bunch of scrub teams. It's not like they've only beaten bad teams. The two games they have left are Excel, um, you know, who people aren't saying is that strong of a team. Yes, they have Mickey X. Maybe they're a little bit better now. Who knows? They didn't look great that great this past weekend um, but they're one of the, the the weaker teams in the lec and then they have g2 now obviously if you take a look at the lec standings right now g2 is tied for second g2 is honestly playing pretty well they are looking very solid they are looking good uh, especially now that they're kind of over covid and not having to deal with that anymore they've looked a lot better but G2 isn't really expected to be um you know some crazy insane team you know if rogue was able to beat fanatic and able to beat vitality they should have a decent shot at taking down G2 as well. Now, obviously, G2 can beat them, and, and Rogue needs to show up, and G2 is probably and hopefully going to put up a good fight. Um, but, you know, Rogue is very, very close to, to going through this whole first round, Robin undefeated, and this has a lot of people excited. 
because they have Malrong coming in, and, and, and I think everyone knew he was going to be pretty good, obviously coming from Damwon Kia, getting to play under Canyon. We saw him play some games in the LCK where he looked pretty good. Now, obviously, um, jungling for uh, Damwon Kia and, and jungling for Rogue is two very, very different things, but still, he was expected to be one of the better junglers in the LEC. We just didn't know how good, but he's coming in with this awesome, exciting style of sacrificing himself and sacrificing his own farm and his own pathing for his team you know he is setting up larson he is setting up comp he is setting up oduamne and they are paying that back if you look at rogue right now oduamne larson and comp i believe are all three top three in their position for dpm uh in the lec right now like these three guys are playing out of their minds in terms of just team fights and consistency and overall putting out damage and carrying these games and that's letting trimby and malrong play for them and play through them very, very well. And, and Malrong and Trimby are looking like these amazing, awesome facilitators are doing a great job. But if you're going to, you know, put resources into your guys, you need your guys to perform and they're doing just that. And this is super, super exciting. Now, I obviously have some questions about uh, once maybe the meta shifts, how rogue, how good rogue is going to be. Obviously, metas change, you know, over the course of splits or, or seasons or whatever. Is uh, Malrong going to be able to keep up this gank heavy play style? What if jungle gets some changes? What if the champions get changed? How's that going to go? And also, what if teams start game planning around this super gank heavy, you know, play style? Is there ways to counter this? Is there ways to set some of these things up now? I think in this season, it's a little bit harder to counter with the TP changes. You know, if the jungler, junglers can kind of gank a little bit more freely because you're not at risk of getting, you know, insta TP'd on countered by the mid lane, by the top lane. Yes, it might make tower dives a little bit, uh, not harder, but tower dives are still possible to be defended, but just regular ganks in your lane, jungle has a little bit more agency in terms of that. Um, but still, you know, is there ways that teams can set this up? You know, are we going to start seeing uh, junglers trying to to key in on Ma Rank's pathing a little bit extra? Are, there, are we going to see some crazy stuff like some Shens to try and counter it? Um, are, are, are junglers going to start invading him more? Are junglers going to be counter ganking him more? Are, are people just going to be playing more safe in the early game? You know, I don't exactly know. But it is interesting uh, how Rogue and Malrong has a little bit different play style than a lot of other junglers in the LEC right now. And then it's paying off very, very well. And I think it works specifically on this rogue team really, really good. Now, on the other hand, what I am, am going to say, and I know a lot of other people are saying right now, you know, I'm not the only person to come up with this, but yes, rogue looks great right now. And yes, Oduamne looks good and Larson looks good and, and comp's looking good. And it's crazy because, you know, Malrong and, and comp are coming in and replacing uh, Inspired and Han Sama. And, and these were probably two rogues, two best players last year. Uh, and losing your two best players and still being just as good if not better the next season is crazy and it's not like inspired you know sucks you know he's gone on to evil geniuses and he's looking pretty good so far it's not like han sama was overrated or he sucks and that rogue didn't need him he just went and won the lock-in championship with team liquid rogue is looking good their former players are looking good their new players are looking good that's crazy but we've seen rogue be good in the regular season before rogue spring split last year was very very good rogue summer split last year was very very good but playoff rogue rogue at worlds these were different teams now yes comp was not a part of that malrong was not a part of that but oduamna was oduamna in the regular season and oduamna in the playoffs was two very very different players and the biggest thing for me is larson we are seeing larson right now performing as one of the best mid laners in the lec maybe one of the best players in the lec he's looking very very strong again his laning stats are good. His damage per minute stats are good. He's having good early games. He's having good late games. He's not, you know, maybe doing anything too crazy. I know there's been some talk about him not having very good um, kill participation per 15 minutes or whatever, but he's playing safe. He's playing consistent. He's scaling up. He's being a monster. He, he's playing pretty well overall. But Larson in the playoffs historically has taken a step back. Last year, we did not see him rise up to another level that we like to see the best of the best players do. Even, you know, some players stay the same. He kind of took a step back. So, while Rogue is looking great, while they are looking amazing, remember that this is just spring split. And at the end of the day, this doesn't matter that much if you go and lay an egg in the playoffs. And, obviously, there's still a lot of regular season left to be played. There's still, what, 11 games left for every single team. We still have a whole nother um, round robin around the league. And we still have two games left in this one. So, a lot of things could change right now. But, man, Logue, Rogue is looking very, very good. They're looking impressive. They're looking strong. And I hope they can keep this form up for the rest of the regular season. It's going to be great for the rest of the LEC to, to have another top team to be tested against. And it's just really, really fun to watch. But at the end of the day, Rogue could go 18-0 in the playoffs. 
And if they falter in the, or they could go 18-0 in the regular season, but if they falter in the playoffs, if they can't show up during the big moments, if they can't, you know, make it to MSI, if they can't make it to Worlds and perform, nobody's really going to care. So while I do think it's really, really cool um, that, that Rogue's doing well, I don't think they're going 18-0, but hey, I do think they are looking very, very strong right now. Um, at the end of the day, I don't know if it matters that much, and I don't know if people are going to care that much until they prove us wrong come playoff time. So I, I know Larson's, you know, talked about uh, people talking trash and wanting respect and, and wanting to shut people up and everything, but there's no amount of regular season statement games that are going to do that. So um, I'm very, very impressed. And it, it's been a big surprise, uh, but we're super, super far away from the playoffs still. And that's where Rogue's going to have to show us something. But that is pretty much it for this video today, guys. Definitely drop a like if you did enjoy it. I would appreciate that so, so much. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think about the LEC or, or Rogue right now. Do you think they are the best team in the LEC? Do you think somebody's going to catch them? Do you think somebody's going to expose them? I don't know. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts and opinions. Subscribe, save today, and all my latest content. Hope we catch you guys in the next one. But until then, peace.